historical celebrations, festivals, and religious holidays are an important part of life in Bolivia. All people participate. They wear colorful clothing. And for some fiestas, they adorn themselves with elaborate costumes and masks. A national spirit lives to preserve the history of the conquistadors and the final liberation of their nation in 1825. Bolivia is a landlocked republic almost as large as California and Texas combined. Because it is both mountainous and has no seaport, it is sometimes called the Switzerland of South America. La Paz, the seat of Bolivian government, is one of the most unusual cities in the world. It is quietly nestled on a plateau three miles wide and 10 miles long at an altitude of 12,795 feet. Steep mountains form a complete wall around it. Lofty Ilimani towers above the city. It is the mountain of eternal snow, the watchman of the Bolivian plateau. Writers say Ilimani breathes. It looks, it hears, it speaks the language of the gods. La Paz is dramatic. Tibet is the only other place in the world where people live in an altitude as high as Bolivia. The populace is composed of Aymara Indians, Spanish-speaking whites, and a mixture of the two. The Aymara women dress in brightly colored shawls, blouses, and full skirts. They wear the characteristic derby hat and usually have a child or pack on their back. Indian women come to market very early each morning. They walk several miles from their farm home to sit and tend the stalls of fruits, vegetables, meats, flowers, or cooking utensils. The general atmosphere of the city reflects the Spanish colonial era of the 1500s. But La Paz has modern skyscrapers, hotels, museums, and exposition centers. Standing side by side, the old and the new represent over 400 years of history. South Americans often name streets for important dates in the history of their country. For example, the 20th of October Avenue in La Paz commemorates the founding of the city and the statue of Simon Bolivar, liberator of five South American countries, is located in a prominent place on the 16th of July Avenue. At the edge of La Paz, an area called the Valley of the Moon has strange formations that appear almost identical to the surface of the moon. The highest navigable body of water on Earth lies partly in Bolivia and partly in Peru. Lake Titicaca is 12,506 feet above sea level. Bolivia is geographically divided into three areas, the high Andes with plateaus flanking the ranges, the mile-high tropical zone known as the Yungas, and the vast eastern lowlands. The Yama are typical of the Altoplano Highlands. They serve as beasts of burden a source of wool, leather, and food. The fantastic tropical zone has a climate like eternal spring. Most crops in Bolivia are grown in these warm valleys of five to 6,000 feet altitude. The lowlands cover seven-tenths of the country. Vast grasslands provide pasture for millions of cattle. The northern forests are filled with wild animals, alligators, and giant poisonous snakes. Each of the three areas is different, with its own customs, clothes, music, and art. Yet there is a common feeling among all Bolivians a genuine love and kindness. Monuments portray the gentleness of a race forged in the wilderness of the Andes. Archaeological ruins witness to a mysterious civilization. Ninety percent of the six million people of the country claim Catholicism as their faith. The Constitution guarantees freedom of worship to all religions. Bolivia 
was the last country in South America to receive the Adventist message. Around the turn of the century, colporters began to sell books. But for many years, all attempts to establish the church met with opposition and persecution. Today, more than 25,000 members make the Seventh-day Adventist Church the largest Protestant denomination in the nation. Over 23,000 of these members are located in the high Alto Plano sections. The boarding school, which was established in the early years of the church, is now situated on a fertile plateau in the Yungas area. The climate at Cochabamba is considered one of the best in the world and the rich farming land makes it the granary of Bolivia. From its beginning, this training center has provided the Bolivian field with workers and teachers. Recently, a series of providential happenings fitted together the components for the development of a strong vocational training program. A volunteer worker from California, an architect hitchhiker from Australia, student missionaries, and a sizable donation from Sweden contributed to making possible the needed facilities for this new industrial education. Attention of Sabbath School members this quarter is on the new mission organized in 1977 in the lowlands of East Bolivia. Offices are now under construction in Santa Cruz, a city of 120,000. Ten years ago, Santa Cruz was a tiny rural settlement. Oil was discovered, and it has become the fastest growing area in South America. Pastor Lloyd Logan says the power of God's Spirit can be felt moving throughout this vast rural area of Bolivia. Laymen are filled with a desire to witness. Six years ago, Manuel Huanco was riding a bus he overheard an Adventist talking with a nun. The next Sabbath, he attended a church 30 miles from his home. Two weeks later, he was baptized. During the past six years, Manuel has built four churches. He makes his living as a traveling peddler of popsicles and clothing. At night, he gives Bible studies. His converts total more than 200. A portion of the overflow offering this quarter will be used to build a hospital in the East Bolivia Mission. Medical service includes a plan to fly emergency patients into the hospital from remote areas. Many small villages embedded in the dense jungle have no one but a medicine man to relieve the pain and suffering of the people. These are places where roads and even paths have ended. Only access is by small plane which can land on the grass-covered airstrips. Since securing a plane from the quiet hour, pilot Alan Payne has been flying medical personnel into these remote places. Tuberculosis, typhoid fever, malaria, yellow fever, and infections from insect bites are prevalent enemies of the villagers. Alan is sensitive to the misery and despair he leaves behind. He is anxious to bring relief to physical suffering and hope to their lives through the message of the Bible. At each stop, he leaves pamphlets with those who can read. Te damos gracias, oh Padre, por traernos aquí. Then he offers a prayer for God to open the way to reach the hearts of these people. A todas las personas aquí presente que pueden compartir más de la fe y aprender más de tu amor y que sean siempre sanos es nuestra petición en el nombre de Jesús. Amen. Linda Logan says working for the people in the lowlands of Bolivia means living among them and understanding their needs. Many are very poor, like the young parents of two-year-old Esther. When Esther was a newborn infant, her parents knocked on Logan's door and asked Linda to take their baby. Linda tried to explain that they should keep their own child. The father walked away. Linda was called from the door. 
and when she returned, the mother was also gone. Esther was given to an Adventist lady and her husband who had no children. They have found happiness through Esther and in turn are making a good Christian life for her. The belief and faith of Seventh-day Adventists in Bolivia is expressed in the words of a favorite Adventist hymn. rest beyond. There's relief from every care. In a little while, we are going home. This is a Mission Spotlight Report.